Dan, first of all, I think you have a couple of overwhelming views. One is don't fight the Fed, don't fight the fundamentals. What do you mean by those two? Well, I mean, I think as investors saw last year, if you tried to fight the Fed in the face of them raising rates, you really suffered because multiples compressed off of that. And so I think the the thing you want to be remain very focused on is what is the Federal Reserve going to do? And obviously that's driven by inflation. And then the second part of that is fundamentals in the sense that last year it was really about multiple compression, which drove the market down. And then in June, you started to see estimates starting to come down. I think as you look at 2023, you're going to start to see earnings estimates really starting to get cut as the economy starts to slow down following the rate cut rate hikes in 2022. And so those are the only two things that make up a stock price or the S&P, right? It's earnings and the multiple you pay on those earnings. And I think both of those will be going down in 2023. Okay, so let's talk about what you do like. Uh, maybe that's telling of your first pick, which is cash, basically, uh, you know, three month T-bills. Yeah, I mean, you know, our, our single point estimate on the S&P, and we've written this up and viewers want more detail can go to our website, is 3,000 on the S&P 500, and today the S&P is at 3,800. So obviously our picks are meant to be more on the defensive side in that we think the market can go down another 20% from here at some point during 2023. So with cash, you know, you started last year, if you went into three-month T-bills, you got three one-hundredths of a percent. Now you can get 4.3% on a three-month T-bill. And I think that's a great place to put your money because you're essentially getting paid to wait for the fundamentals to bottom and for the Fed to stop being aggressive. The second one, you know, is healthcare. It's very defensive. We saw that last year. It was down 4% with the S&P down 19. You saw that in 2001 and 2000 as well, where healthcare was actually up when the S&P dropped 19%. So, you know, it's a pretty defensive space as well. And, you know, I think a lot of people like myself, unfortunately, put off going to the doctor during COVID and now there's a little bit of catch up left. There was some of that happened last year, but I think there's a little bit more to go. And my investment thesis is no one wants to die. So it's not a bad mm -hmm. place to be. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that thesis. Uh, yeah, I'll sign up for the same. Uh, the third pick that you like is a play on uranium. You, you think there's just not enough of that to go around? Yeah, I mean, it, if you go back to 2011, you had Fukushima happen. And at that point, everybody was like, okay, we got to get away from nuclear. You know, it's a bad uh, investment area to be in for all the damage it can cause. Then Russia happened invading Ukraine. And so then people started to think about, you know what, we need to get to energy independence. And then also at the same time, you've got this push towards clean energy. And that combined with things like small modular reactors, People are looking at nuclear as a way to get to energy independence as well as clean. And so I think you're going to see that continue to gain momentum as we move forward. 